6691 six, on this. What are you demonstrating in this photo? This is a demonstrative photo that would show if uh, an individual was seated, seated in the rear passenger seat behind the driver uh, would be able to obtain a shot into the front seat passenger. And in terms of the individuals that are in this car, how are they attired? Mr. Williams had... Um, and sorry, let me clarify on that one. The people that are pictured in the photo, oh, yes. what do they have on to protect the scene? They're in a uh, tie back. Okay. So going on to this next photo, what are you documenting here? It is a photo from the other side of the vehicle to just to for its demonstrative only. What okay. number? 6693. I'm sorry. 6692, now moving on to 6693. And it's a, just a, an additional angle. It's all angles from the vehicle. And in terms of there's a marker spot there, the red marker on the back of the, that individual's head in the front seat. What is that showing? That is the approximate uh, entry point for the, uh, for the defect on Anthony Williams. And so now going into photo 6697, I'm sorry, 6696. What angle are you showing in this particular? This is from the rear of the vehicle. The orange that we see at the bottom right, what are those things? Those are the trajectory rods. Going into the next photo, which is for council, 6697. That's another photo from the rear of the vehicle. Are you in any way, shape, or form stating this is the gun that was used? I'm not stating that's the gun that was used at all. Okay. Going into 6698. Again, which are you, what are you documenting here? That would be a, a photograph of, of the same positioning uh, of the gun from behind the, from the rear of the vehicle. Okay. Going to photo 6701. What are you showing here? This is showing the proximity of the back seat passenger behind the driver uh, in relation to the front seat passenger. Okay. And so I'm going to go forward to some of the ones now with the ruler. <laughs> when you are putting the tape measure in, what is your purpose of introducing the tape measure in these photos? And we're now here at 6708 and 6709. To give, for the demonstrative photograph, to give a relation of distance. And so in terms of this picture is showing what? Well, it's not exactly to the end of the barrel of okay. the firearm. And uh, so it's approximately uh, probably about 12 inches from the head to the end of the barrel. And so showing it from the other side, is that the better angle? Yes. Okay. And that is photo 6713. What are you showing in this orientation of the arm. It showed, it, the photo is showing that the arm does not have to be fully extended to obtain that shot. Okay. And so going now to this photo, which is 6714, much greater distance. Oh. Correct, so 6714, shows the firearm in an alternative position, again for demonstrative purposes, to show uh, a, a distance range and a, a firearm can still be fired in that position and in the direction of the front seat passenger. Okay. 
So now we're moving on to the rear passenger. Are you using the same demonstrative model for this individual? Yes. Okay. So you talked about the blood from Cortland or the driver, Cortland Henry's shirt on the front. Was there also an analysis done of the blood on the back of Cortland Henry's shirt? By the crime lab, yes. Okay. And were you made aware of the results of the DNA of the blood sample on the back? Judge, and here's the Watch him, sorry. Sustain of your camera. This is done. Refer to the So, Detective Williams. There's testimony before this jury as to the person who contributed the blood to the back of that shirt. How does that information help your analysis in terms of the shooting inside the car? The information was learned by me after the fact and uh, objection oh. hearsay. I'm not how it helped, not what the information was. Go ahead. And it helped to uh, solidify my analysis. Okay. In terms of, based on the information that you have, can you state how the driver was positioned when the shots occurred for the back seat passenger, Mr. Thomas? The driver, in my opinion, was seated in the front seat when the, when the shots were fired inside the vehicle. And in terms of how would blood get on the back of the shirt? because he's seated in that position. Okay. So I want to ask, can we put some chairs here to help demonstrate what we're talking about? Sure. So you reviewed all of the photos from the initial VRMAR crime scene? Yes. And is there a difference in the height of the front seats and the back seats? There are. And so this is not anywhere close to exact. Is that a fair statement with the chairs here? Correct. No. So when you demonstrate if you were the driver, how you would be positioned when the individual sitting in the rear passenger side seat is shot? If you could step down and show how would the blood from him then be on this individual? So the driver is seated in this position, um, just just seated here, uh, and and not moving. The blood from the from this individual from the blowback lands here, and blood from this individual uh, lands on the back, and it's all from just not moving. Okay. In terms of the back of the seat, is his back pressed against the back of the seat? Yes. Okay. And that for the first individual or the second individual? For both. Okay. In terms of, and you can resume your seat, we'll come back to this in a moment. So in terms of the distance between the individual in the rear driver's side seat and Mr. Thomas in that. Do you know there to be a minimum distance they were separated by? Can you restate that? Sure. The individual, whoever was in the rear passenger seat on the driver's side, and then Chris Thomas, who is in the rear passenger seat passenger side, is there a minimum distance that they are separated by? There is. And how do you know that? So we have a known distance, as I said earlier, um, we are confined to the inside of this vehicle. So we have a known distance of shoulder width inside the back seat of this vehicle. Uh, we know a, a distance of uh, shoulder width of Mr. Thomas, and then um, we would be able to deduce the difference uh, between the uh, between the, uh, the center console and another passenger. So in terms of the photos at the Jeep when it first came to the hospital, are you aware of how the center, back center console was positioned? I, yeah, it was down just like that. And showing from what's been previously admitted to evidence as 
States 30, photo DSC underscore 0127. Is that important for your reconstruction? Correct. So this is the, the blood that is on the center console is, in, is consistent with Mr. Thomas uh, crumpl uh, crumbling, crumpling uh, into the position above the, or onto the center console of uh, the back seat. So the next photo in that series, again from States 30, is that one shows DSC 0 underscore 0 1 3 3. Is this the plastic bag you spoke about in process? Yes. Going back to your photos, what are you demonstrating in CSW underscore 6716? So this is a demonstrative photograph to show that you can fire a firearm from that position in the direction of a passenger who would be seated in that seat. Okay. Now looking from the other angle, what are you looking at in this photo, which for the record is 6717? And that is just a forward uh, picture from the front of the vehicle facing towards the back of the vehicle to show that it is still possible to fire a firearm inside the vehicle. Okay. And then in terms of the measurement, how far away is the firearm from the face at that demonstrative photo, which is 6719? And this particular demonstrative, it's approximately six inches. Can you tell the lead and gentlemen of the jury if Mr. Thomas was sitting straight up and didn't move to the side to get away from a gun? At one point, I believe that he did. And how do you know that? Because uh, Mr. Thomas has what's called a defensive wound on his, on his uh, right hand, and that defensive wound was caused by uh, a projectile. So I believe that at some point he turned and put his hands up or attempted to de-escalate what was going on and received the firearm uh, projectile through his thumb. Okay, and so you're pointing to your right hand. In terms of the injuries to Mr. Thomas, do you recall which hand they are on? I would have to look at the photograph. Okay, we can come back to that in a moment on that. So the, and if Ms. Smith is okay, you see it the any photo. Okay. The, Defensive wound. Why is that important for you as a shooting reconstructionist? Because it lets me know that that Mr. Thomas was not aware of what was going on. Uh, he was taken by surprise, and <clears throat> his hands being up. Uh, there's if his hands were down, he would not receive a projectile through his thumb. His hands are in an, an up position, uh, almost saying, you know, maybe don't shoot or I, I, I relinquish or something. Uh, but he receives a defensive wound due to that uh, projectile. And I think at that point, uh, he repositioned to be forward facing. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to approach with the any photos, which are state 75. showing you what's been previously admitted as State 75. Yeah. Which hand is pictured is the moon in photo 12 on that exhibit? That's the, it's the left hand. Okay. 